Okay, so that exercise you just did is a perfectly good exercise. However, it is not lazy dragging. What you guys were doing were shun and knee circles. That well, we did see. lazy dragging first and then reversed oh. it. Well, show me lazy, show me doing you you doing lazy dragging then. Right? Kind of. So we're I mean I'm looking at you, but <laughs> well, I mean this this is one of the problems with with working online is everything gets a little flattened out. Yeah. Um, but that's okay because uh, I wanted to talk about uh, Peng Lu Ji and An today. And I wish Jill and, and uh, Genevieve were here, but they're not. So we're just gonna go ahead with this. Um, and we can, uh, and I was thinking to, to take a move or two from Silk Reeling, and we might as well take Lazy Dragon. That's a, a good one to work with. Um, uh, to, to kind of uh, give us give us a way to analyze how you use this actually in movement. So the first thing I want to do is look at a piece of art by uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Right? So hold on, I'm going to share this Leonardo. You've all seen it. <laughs> We're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There he is. All right. But what I want to point out is not so much the, the figure, but the geometric figures in which he's standing. So he's standing within a circle, which certainly goes really well with Tai Chi. But then he's also standing within a within a square or a cube. So although this is not not exactly in line with this, the, this is a circle that's been squared, or a square that's been circled. You know, uh, the center of the circle is his navel, right there. So that this really uh, comports well with Tai Chi. Uh, this this is a study in proportions actually for architecture and the architecture um, the proportions are then applied to architecture so it this is classic roman architecture as uh, delineated by vitruvius so this is called the vitruvian man because he is talking about the roman architectural philosopher uh, vitruvius but they were making very humanistic buildings and the proportions of the buildings were accorded with the human figure. So that's what he's looking at. But what I want to look at is the relationship between a circle and a square. And if you square a circle, you're, you're going to have four energies, one rising, one turning, one dropping, and one turning the other way. All right? So you could say uh, expand, turn, drop, and contract. Okay, let's stop that. And again, that's a that's a metaphor. It's not a scientifically exact metaphor, but sort of poetically, poetically exact. So I, I can't remember, because I've been doing this in, in the advanced Tai Chi class, too. And we've talked about it a little in this class, so uh, I, can't, I can't remember what we have done and what we haven't done. But basically, Pung is expansion from the center. Uh, Lu is turning on your own axis, your, your central column. Uh, on is sinking. Right, sinking into the ground, and G is now contracting that circle back into the center. Those are not the only energies, but those are the first four energies. They're the most common energies, and they're the four energies you find in any circle. So if you're doing uh, any of the exercises, Tai Chi, Qigong, any of the forms of Qigong, you can, you can, you don't have to, but you can pay some attention to that. 
for Tai Chi, it's really, really important. So let's, let's talk a little bit about Tai Chi. And we can focus maybe on silk reeling exercises, which are all derived from Tai Chi. And they're a chance uh, for you to practice the fundamentals of Tai Chi, uh, but, but without, without going through a whole form. So they, they take, uh, it's like if you, if Tai Chi is a macromolecule, right? So Tai Chi is a macromolecule like DNA. It's incredibly complex. It's incredibly long. You know, if you have to practice and memorize it, my God, you're going to go crazy. So instead, you, you go down to the atomic level and you go, all right, what atoms are there? You know, what sections are there? What atoms are there? What subatomic particles are there? So these might be the atomic particles, huh? I, I'm just going to use my elbow here to, to demonstrate this. Uh, pong, lu, an, ji, pong, lu, an, ji. Right? So that's kind of a mechanical way to do it. Uh, we don't usually move like that, right? When we when we use our bodies, <laughs> and we don't we don't move like that. We might move more like this. So why why do the more organic one? Why not just do the um, do the organic one? Because when you try to get beginners to do the organic one, they don't know what you're doing. It's it's so it's so flowing. So you have to you have to square. That's the circle. That's the circle. Now it's also spirals, but that's more advanced, right? It's a circle. But it's it's um, it's too much to do the analog version of it right from the beginning. So you do the digital version instead. It's simpler. So it's like going down to the subatomic level, right? Pung. Lu. An. Chi. Pung. Lu. An. Chi. So you're, you, you have squared the circle. It's a just, it's a way of learning, of paying attention to this, because the truth is, Peng Lu Jian An is in every circle in Tai Chi and in, and in Qigong. Um, but this is a chance, silk reeling is a perfect place to, to practice it. Right. Peng Lu An Qi. There's another reason, though, besides ease of learning, to, to break it down into its constituent parts so you can see what's going on, is that each of those energies is functional. You actually do something with them. All right? So, pong, lu, an, qi, in that one circle, there, there are a dozen martial applications. All right? So I set this up with Annie. She's going to come in and help us. So let me call her. Annie. So you guys have all seen this one before anyway, uh, I think several times. Um, but it never hurts to see it again. I'm on a diet, guys. <laughs> I topped out at 250 and I'm like, nah, I, I gotta start going the other direction. <laughs>
Malcolm, what do you have to give up when you get Annie to be the crash test dummy? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so no, I, I'm not going to use her for a crash test dummy today. Uh, it's just, it's. I think it's a little more instructive when you have someone to interact with, right? So, like I was saying, e each of these energies in any given situation, yeah, it's on there. Uh, any given situation can is actually useful. Uh, the, the martial applications are based on these. So again, Annie, we're, we're screwing around. Annie manages to get hold of my hand, right? And she starts to twist. So I'm not going to fight her. So let's move closer to the. I'm not going to, she's got me. I'm not going to try to fight. There's, yeah, there's other things I could do, but I, I'm not going to try to fight. I'm going to listen. Oh, so she's bending me backwards, twisting me around like this. So I'm just going to go with her. Pung. All right. Now, how useful is this? And I'm going to have to look at her here so I don't hit her. All right. But if you were actually doing this, right, what she's going to try and do is twist me around, right? Bam. Pong. Pong. Right? Now, suppose we were really sparring a little bit, and I tried for an elbow strike. An elbow strike is actually worse than getting hit with your fist, usually. But she's really smart, and she sees it coming. So she blocks it and pushes me over her. Well, you don't give up, right? Okay, so the pung, the pung didn't work. Well, then I'm going to try the lu and the on. Right? Now, we could just stay here. I could just back up into her. Right? Move her that way. Or, and I'm just going to do just a tiny little bit of this. I'm going to uh, lu, uh, uh, pung gets me up. Lou gets me around, so I've started to trap her body. And I'm going to actually touch and contact her arm. And now, now that I've kind of trapped her arm, I'm just going to sink my body. And then I might start to turn back here. And she's going to have to go with it, unless she can figure out a way to get out of that. And there are ways to get out of it, but, all right. So... I, I think that's plenty. All right. Thank you. All right. So the, the point is, is every one of those energies has a function. Right. Pung. Lu. Pung. Lu. On. Uh, now, I'm calling this G. But do you notice there's also a lot of twisting on my axis? So it's not just G. It's actually G and, and Lu. All right. So it's Pung, Lu, An, Lu, and G. Or I like to say G and Lu because to me G is the important uh, energy here. All right. Why is, why is G the important energy? Because... When you draw everything into the center, it's, it's like closing the vice on them. And that's really the functional part of this. Uh, Annie has left already, but imagine, imagine her arm is still there. Watch this hand. So you can throw someone by twisting their, their arm around with the other hand. Right? which is really not a G function. Uh, is this clear? Let's, let's look at a move like um, um, Lazy Drag. Uh, and this is running maybe a little bit into the, the flatness of, of video here, but I'll, I'll try to do it at different angles so you can, so you can see. Right? When you're doing Lazy Dragon, what you're, what you're really doing is a, is a lot, let's say we're going from right to left, uh, is a large circle, large spiraling circle to escape from something. 
So, all right, somebody grabs your hand, all right? They, they've already, they've got your hand. Well, what do you do about it? Well, one thing you can do is, even though they've got your hand, is drive it up. Not by moving your arm, but by moving your leg and your waist. All right? So a lot of this, of Lazy Dragon, all right, is about moving your waist. If, if your waist in Lazy Dragon always faces forward, then you're not doing Lazy Dragon. You may be doing something, but you're not doing Lazy Dragon. So, all right, you screw down into this leg, and then, boom. Now watch, watch my arm in relationship to my body. The arm is, it's not really the arm that's moving, it's the body that's moving. Now, I was exaggerating a little, the arm will move a little bit. But the mistake most people make is they just move their arm. Now, that's not the exercise, this is the exercise. And what Master Zhang said basically um, is sort of go for your nose, all right? And lined up with your own nose. So you're not way ahead of it, you're not behind it, you're not, you know, boom. Now, and that's, so that's pump, right? Pump. You're also expanding in all directions. Pump. Now, before you turn, you drop all the way from your nose to your Don Chan. And so you're going to sink in this claw. And in the blue claw. Now, you start, put your intention on your tips of your fingers and start going back the other way. So it's a big spiral. And you go, well, why are you doing that? It's to get away from somebody. They've got a hold of your hand. You're getting away. You're spiraling out. So when you come up here, you actually should be in your chest, and then immediately you go down into your Ming Man. So the chest, how can I say this? It's kind of like the chest caves in, but, but there's no, there should be no pressure on your chest. Don't try to make your chest go down. Just drop from your chest into your Ming Man. And that's going to hollow out your chest. That's what gives you the space to go through. All right. Pong. And uh, Lu. An. Chi. Pong. The Lu feels small, but, but turn... Master Zhang, when he used to do this, I'll see if I can find some uh, video of him doing this. Um, when, he, when he first was leading our classes and he would lead these, uh, it was much more athletic than the way that we do it. I don't know whether I can even do it anymore. So if you're in a big horse stance when you do that, and he was, he was very good at it. It was a really beautiful exercise. Uh, does this all make sense? Questions? Um, I was just gonna make a comment. You know, I worked with Michael on Sundays in Golden Gate Park and yeah. we do, we do <laughs> he likes a lot of joint locking and stuff like that. But oh, yeah. Pung, I was just thinking about it the other day. This Pung to me is, it's almost like a probe 
and a trap at the same time. Like you, you come up and you're feeling, but you're giving them a little resistance and then they're going to make a move. And then that sort of gives you like the direction you're going to go in, like suck them into the washing machine. <laughs> uh, that, that, that was, that's what it felt like when you used to push hands with Master Zhang. It was like getting sucked into a, into a big washing machine. Um, yeah. I mean, that's unfortunately something that we just can't do. We can't do the, any, uh, any push hands work here, which is kind of a shame, but, um, Anyway, you've got uh, Michael to work with, and Michael loves to do Chana and, and all that. <laughs> so you, you should be learning a lot. Yeah. Um, Catherine, let me see you do it, this exercise. Okay, so um, let me try and clarify this a, a little bit. And part, part of the problem is just the flatness of video and, and cameras. So I'm gonna do it from different angles. All right, you can kind of count it this way. Start with your weight on, the, on your right leg. All right, sink, I took all my, I took my costume off here. This, the red leg is the uh, this is the right leg, all right? Sink in the in the in the right claw, all right? One, two, three. So it's like a big triangle, right? Not not an equilateral triangle, but an, an isosceles triangle, all right? One. Two, three. So you go from the right leg to the left leg on one, you go down on two, and you go back from the left leg to the right leg on three. One, two, three. One, two. Three, one, two, three, or if you're going the other way, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, let me see you do it again. One, two, three. Okay, now think about this. The f one is pun, right? All right. Two is, uh, and, and then there's a, a little loo on the end, right? So you expand and you turn. Two is on you're you're dropping down you're sinking all right yes the ankles and the knees bend a little bit but where you really sink is here here how do you how do you sink here well for one thing you relax all this and you let yourself drop into your legs the other thing you can do is open your knees Maybe, maybe a, a good analogy for or metaphor is you're sitting down. It's like sitting on a chair. All right. Pum. Lou. All right. On. Now. G. All right. 
G comes from squeezing inside. So that's like the really mechanical um, paint by number version of this. But it can help clarify for you what the actual uh, geometry of all this is. When you get that, then you can move on to the circles and the spirals. Because what you're really doing is a gigantic spiral, right? A whole body spiral. Turn your, your, your opponent's got, your opponent's got your arm. Watch. Your opponent's got your hand, got your arm. This motion like this helps to, you can do it because you're using your body, not your arm. It's not this. It's this, all right? And when you do that, he's still going to have hold of you, but you're going to disrupt his chi pattern because you're, you're going to move him. Instead of him moving you, you're going to move him, right? This part is, is about turning the tables on him. This disrupts him, and it puts you in a better position. This is about turning the tables, because he's got, he's got a hold of you, and you suddenly you're turning it around, right? And then that's the escape. Now, watch this hand. What is that hand doing? That, yeah, that hand is coming. <laughs> he's, he's trying to hold on to you. So he starts in a good position, but, he, but he, ends, he ends up going like this. So you come behind and shove him on the shoulder. Knock him over. Now you do it on this side. Boom. Yeah, good. Good. So good, Catherine. That was be that's better. It's a uh, very it's a very complex movement, in fact. It, it, it is. And uh, again, like so many other things, it's unfortunate that we're not live in the same room because um, I, would, I would work with you and I would have you guys work together because the important thing is to get the feeling, the body feeling of this. Um, and then you can, because you, otherwise you're sort of just trying to figure it out this way and it's much more difficult to do that. Um, anyway, so I, I hope that gives you uh, some, some kind of feeling for why Peng, the 13 energies, Peng Lu Jianan, are, are called out. And you need to have that language and you need to have um, uh, an idea of what each of those is, partly because they're actually functional, right? Peng, right? Lu. Um, Lu An Chi, right? Um, they're functional, but also because in the learning process, if we're learning a new move, right? Um, and and maybe maybe we do something like this. So, Peng Lu An, Peng Lu An. I can talk about that, and you, and you will have some references. Okay, Pong. Well, that's the same Pong that we used before, only now, now instead of it is this way, now it's this way. It's smaller. It's a wraparound, and then on. All right. And when you when you, uh, <laughs> I can remember Master uh, Zhang doing this to me, and. He did it the way they actually do it in China, which looks like this. When you do it in the form, it looks like this. When you do it in real life, it looks like that. 
you press someone all the way to the ground and they believe me they will go down um, they've got hold of your hand right you come around on top of their hand and just sandwich the two so you you just release this hand keep pulling the wrist and you 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 just lightly hold on to them so it's more like glue than anything else and their forearm now is running parallel to yours because they they've they've grabbed you they've got hold of you here their uh forearm is parallel to yours you come up on top of their forearm and now you use the weight of your body to press down. It is a devastating um, chin up joint lock. You will go down. You'll go down and your arm will be broken. Boom, really quick. Pung. Lu. On, 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 on. Boom. If, I, if we all don't have that language, I can't tell you those things because there's no real way to do it. Um, and as you go through the form, everything, everything is based on those basic ideas. So these are, these are like the uh, subatomic particles of, of every move. And you know, you need to know your subatomic particles. Okay. Um, so that's what I wanted to say today. We'll probably do it again when uh, Genevieve and uh, Jill come back. Um, but any questions? Um, we did, I think it was a long time ago. We did like a walking exercise that was Peng Lu An Ji or... Peng, yeah, let's or do it. Or Ji An. Let's do it. So this is, this is a walking drill that is kind of counted as, as the shortest Tai Chi form. Um, it's really, it's really a, a drill, um, not really a form, but it's sort of counted as a form because it's continuous. So you do it first on the right, then you do it on the left, then you do it on the right, then you do it on the left, and there's no stopping. And it's a walking drill, so you're gonna walk as you do this. And what we used to do is start on one side of the field and go all the way to the other side. And then we would turn around and we'd go all the way back. <laughs> and then we'd turn around and we'd go all the way back. And, and I've told you this story before, but Master Jean would keep this up until you were ready to scream. And he did it on purpose because it's, these kinds of practices are very much like meditation. And as long as you are fighting it, as long as you're thinking, well, I want to go do something else, you're not really there practicing it. You're kind of half-assed practicing it. So what you have to do with students is just drive them into the ground until they just get, give up. I mean, that's what he did to me. That's what he did to everybody. It's just finally you just go, okay, I give up. We're just going to do this all damn night long. And then something really magical happens. Then you start to enjoy it and you start to go, oh, this actually feels really good, right? Boom, boom, boom. Unfortunately, we don't have a giant practice field to, to do that in here. But I'll teach you this and then you practice, practice in your home. Uh, if, if you've got some space in the house, if you've got a, some space outside, outside is a perfect place to do it. So it's going to be pung. Stick the left foot forward. Right? And make sure there's a little distance between your, your feet here. Right? Pung. Very simple. Pung. Pong. Lu. Hold the ball. Chi. On. Pong. 
do? Hold the ball. G. On. Pong. Lu. Hold the ball. Chi. On. Let me do it from a slightly different angle here. Pong. Lu. Hold the ball. Chi. Right. Little finger, thumb, chi. The, the palms meet. Right. Chi. Uh, chi, you might think of as a push. <laughs> Pong. Lu. Hold the ball. Chi. On. Pong. Lu. Hold the ball. Chi. On. Pong. Lu. Hold the ball. Chi. On. Right, from here to your knee. Right. Same as in the form. Right. Does this make sense? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that exercise. <laughs> it's a great exercise. Catherine says no. So I really <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a good exercise. It's just that it's hard for me to figure it out right now. But well, it is a good but, exercise. Again, it's, it's video, so it makes it hard. Um, let me try it sometimes with my back to you. All right. Hum. Lu. Hold the ball. Chi. On. Hum. Lu. Chi. On. Part of the problem is I don't have much room here. Right. Um, Jack, why don't you, uh, uh, or uh, Catherine, let me, let me see what you've got so far. No, no. I mean, really, I just didn't get it. So I can't not even show you because I didn't get it. Okay, then Jack, would you turn your uh, back to the camera? Did, uh, uh, Catherine, did it help with the back to the camera? Yes, it did. Okay, <laughs> it's very strange. I don't know where I am. Uh, <laughs> over to your uh, left. Go, go, come over to your left here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And okay. Just, uh, yeah. Turn. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Should I do it again? Hold on. Catherine, maybe this will help a little bit. Pump. 
Hum. Lu. Hold the ball. Chi. On. Pong. Lu. Hold the ball. Chi. On. All right. So if you can <laughs> go out and buy yourself a kid's ball. All right. What so, is what is what is exactly the shape that the ball is doing in the space? Well, it's a very complex shape, but uh, but basically that's that's what I'm trying to to show you. So the 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 first right is is just pump. Now, when when we do it ourselves, um, well, let's just pay let's just pay attention to the ball. Right? So the ball's coming up like this. It's a circle. Right? Pong. Lu. Right? Now you're gonna to have to change your footwork. So you just hold the ball and it's gonna go under your quad like this. Right? So pong lu under your quad, and that'll take you, that'll help you shift your weight to the uh, left leg. And then you step forward, and now you're gonna push the ball, right? I'm pushing the ball. Push the ball straight forward, right? And then it kind of comes up to your shoulder, and you push it straight down. So the first part of it, to simplify it, is a big circle. Roll under, and then push forward and push down. So straight forward, straight down. Straight forward, straight back. They're, they're, they're not exactly following each other, but you could say they are, right? So you're pushing it in one direction and then you're pushing it back in the other direction. Does that make sense? I mean, when you explain it, it does make sense. When I'm in the space and trying to follow you, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so stupid. I don't get it. But honey, don't ever, don't ever do that to yourself. You are not. No, no, no. I'm, I mean, just, okay. I'm not stupid, but I, I really have troubles understanding how I, I'm, I'm lost in the space. Let's just it's, say it. The, the, the problem that we all face is doing this on video. Because if we were in a, in a room together, I could demonstrate this and you could move around me all 360 degrees and see me from different angles and you would get this much faster. Everybody would. It's hard to do it on video. It's possible to do it, but it's hard. It's possible to do it because you are learning 24 and you're doing very well at it, right? So this is this is exactly like that. Imagine you got your you got your weight on the red leg, right? To the blue leg, back to the red leg. Underneath, right? Weight on the blue leg, step forward and push, and then push back. And now you do it on this side. Big circle, underneath, push, push back. All right. Okay, this is gonna take a few times to get this, but it's a, uh, it's a great little routine once you get it because it's, it's just an endless necklace. You just keep going as long as you want. You know, you can do five of them, you can do 500 of them. Okay, guys. Thank you. <laughs> we'll, we'll practice it again tomorrow. Ciao. Thanks.